Dennis Rodman is an interesting guy to say the least, but what do you know about his family? Don't stress it, this is all you need to know about the family of this eccentric legend who has different families and 28 different siblings. You heard that right. In Trenton, New Jersey on May 13th, 1961, Dennis Rodman was born to Shirley and Philander Rodman as their first child. His father, Philander Rodman Jr., was a man who lived up to the name of Philander. He epitomized Philandry like his life depended on it. But before he contributed to bringing the NBA legend into this world, he committed to the United States Army as an aviator who later fought in the Vietnam War. He is an avid cook, and while he was in Vietnam, he ran a restaurant called The Soul Kitchen, which was situated in Saigon. There, he catered southern dishes to black GIs, and after the war, he continued as a cook back in the United States Air Force Base. However, when Dennis was still only a child with two of his other siblings, Philander left his family. It was said that one day in 1970, he took a military chaplain's daughter and ran off from the force where he had served for 17 years. His destination of elopement and the start of his new life became the Philippines. He ran a bar there, but his new marriage only lasted until 1977. He continued with other women, brought more babies into this world, and never looked back to his first family, unfortunately. Well, at least until Dennis became a rich NBA star. He resurfaced again after that, appearing on Philippine television, taking interviews concerning Dennis. It was during one of these interviews, which reports say he usually charged for, that he made some painful revelations. Now married to two Filipino ladies, Philander finally opened up about his promiscuous lifestyle. First, he justified it by saying he was a Muslim, and then he excused his abandonment of his first family to his own father, Philander Sr., who also left him as a kid. He further blamed the fact that black family suffered so much during this time that the fathers couldn't take pressure anymore and had to leave for a better life. He revealed that he currently had 27 children from four different wives and other concubines, and he was still open to further procreation. And when they talked about the autobiography, Bad As I Wanna Be, that his son released in 1996, Philander said, quote, They think Dennis is bad, they ain't been around me, they ain't seen nothing, I'm the bad one." End quote. At this time, Dennis had yet to see his father since he was three, so he wrote in his book, quote, I haven't seen him in more than 30 years, so what's there to miss? I just look at it like this. Some man brought me into this world, and that doesn't mean I have a father. End quote. Philander tried to reach his son once he became popular, and he hung pictures of him in his Bulls jersey next to Michael Jordan's on the wall of his bar, but his son never responded to any of his faxes or the interviews that his father gave that found their way to him. Then his father took it further. He made more money from his famous son by not only charging thousands of dollars for interviews, but also for exclusive book rights, and even went as far as authoring a book about his son. Nevertheless, after waiting for decades, Philander finally did meet his son in 2012 after over 42 years of being apart from him. During this time, Philander had converted his bar to a restaurant and was serving, among other things, fries, burgers, and red, green, and yellow colored buns that were representatives of Dennis's colorful hairstyles. He was 71 years old at the time, and Dennis had accompanied some of his old teammates, including Pippin, to play in an exhibition game in Manila, Philippines. Their meeting, however, was brief. No talk of the past, no fights, just handshakes, haze, and how do you do's. And at the end, Dennis took his pop's number and promised to call, but whether he did was never reported, and neither was any possible relationship that could have stemmed from that. Philander Rodman later died from prostate cancer in 2020 at the age of 79, but before his death, he claimed to have fathered 29 children from 16 different women. Jeez, man, do you know anyone who has had that many children and lovers? And do you think something like this will still be possible now? Uh, let us know what you think in the comments section. But as for Philander's 16 wives and concubines, Dennis hardly knew or met any of them aside from his mother, Shirley. After her husband abandoned their family, Shirley Rodman took up many odd jobs to keep the family afloat. She moved her little family of four to a housing project called Oak Cliff in Dallas and did as many as four jobs at one time. The little free time she had was spent playing piano in the Church of the Living God. Many years after Dennis became popular, the New York Times interviewed Shirley, and in that interview, she narrated her ordeal after her husband left. Quote, 
I was 28 with three kids working three to four jobs and my husband just threw us aside. Dennis never understood I'm only one person. I had to be both a mom and a dad and I did the best I could." End quote. But the NBA legend had not been impressed. He claims his mother was not loving to him and never hugged or kissed him. He felt overwhelmed being raised around girls and he declared that she was a terrible mother and treated his sisters way better than she treated him. His sisters were taller and surely felt her daughters were better basketball players than Dennis and would always mock him for it. Maybe this was why Dennis started playing pinball, a game that earned him the nickname Worm, which was strangely provided by his mother because of how he moved his body when he played. So when Dennis miraculously turned the tides with his height and athleticism, Shirley was shocked. Quote, it scared him and it scared me. Nobody could understand that kind of growth. Afterward, Dennis just withdrew. He was an introvert and just so horribly, horribly shy. He was always an overly sensitive man, and back then he wanted to have a different personality. He lived in a fantasy world, end quote. But Shirley didn't entirely outcast him. She also assisted him with money to look for jobs, but he would use it for something else. She eventually threw Dennis out of her house. But after Dennis was taken in by another family known as the Rich Family and given a better life, Shirley still held claim to her son. Many years ago, she told the Chicago Tribune, quote, I'm not angry at anyone. I've had no falling out with the riches or my son, but how dare people sit there and talk about Dennis's surrogate white family or his second mother. He doesn't need another mother. He has one. I raised my son. Looking back at my life, being alone, I'm amazed I did what I did. Then I look at Dennis's life and it's even more mind boggling to me. I think of the nights I sat in his apartment here alone for hours, night after night, wondering, is my son dead tonight? Is he going to be in jail when I wake up tomorrow, or the day after that?" End quote. And as for Dennis's surrogate family, the way he entered into their lives was somewhat faded. There was a 13-year-old kid named Brian Rich who lived with his white parents in Bocchito, Oklahoma. One day in the summer of 1983, Brian went out with three of their friends to hunt in the woods. When the kids stopped at a tree to reload their guns, Brian's gun went off and he mistakenly shot and killed his best friend named Brad Robinson. Brian was devastated. He fell into a serious depression and his only demand then was for his parents to adopt a boy he could play with and teach since his two brothers were four and six years older than him. So his mother Pat Rich asked him to pray for one and then later begged him to attend a basketball camp in southern Oklahoma. While he was hooping in one of the courts in the center, guess who joined him? Yup, none other than Dennis Rodman. Brian recalls the first time he saw Dennis Rodman. Quote, he was real tall and skinny and he had a couple of quarters in his ears. I just kept looking at him and after a while he came down to where I was and started shooting. After a while, we started playing one-on-one, -on -one, and after that, I started liking him, and we started being friends." End quote. After their meeting, Brian went home to talk about his new friend with so much light finally back in his eyes. The Rich family invited Rodman to live with them, and he finally had a home of his own, except this time, he was milking cows, building a deep relationship with someone he was nine years older than, driving tractors of the family, and staying out of trouble, actually. And he desperately needed to stay away from that trouble because there was a lot of trouble for blacks in his neighborhood which saw his race as outcasts. Even an in-law saw it as a shame and disgrace for the rich family to help a black guy. The in-laws gave him a hard time the most and asked that Rodman stay away from family gatherings like Thanksgiving. But the rich family were kind to Rodman and stomached all the talks against them caring for a black guy. Brian on his part missed Thanksgiving that Dennis didn't go to. Rodman spent his college years with the Riches and would even spend some of his holidays when he turned pro. But it wasn't all roses with the Riches. Dennis had once gotten into an argument with Pat and she had actually called him the N-word. She admitted this in a documentary and said that the fight caused the relationship to dwindle. But he soon got picked up by the Detroit Pistons in 1986 and was embraced by a whole nother family. Chuck Jerome Daly was born on July 20th, 1930 and was the coach of the Detroit Pistons who won back-to-back -back championship titles in 1989 and 1990. This was of course during Detroit's bad boys era that had the likes of Isaiah Thomas roaming the courts. Daly was also the coach of the Dream Team that clinched the 1992 Summer Olympic title for men's basketball. 
His relationship with Dennis was deep and Rodman had described him as a surrogate father, but people didn't understand how important Daly was to him until the coach resigned from the Pistons in 1992. Rodman was crushed. He took a rifle one day in 1993 and decided to end his life. But he fell asleep instead, woke up, and had an epiphany to live his life the way he wanted to live it. But what about his biological family? Whatever happened to them? What became of his sisters who were favorites of being basketball greats? Well, one major thing Deborah and Kim Rodman gave their elder brother was motivation. His sisters attended South Oak Cliff in the late 70s and were amazing basketball players in their own right, coached by the famous Gary Blair. Now, before Dennis graduated high school, Deborah and Kim used to kick his butt every time in basketball. Quote, I couldn't beat them, Rodman said. They take me and a friend of mine out and beat us all the time. I finally decided one day if they could do it, I could do it. End quote. Deborah led the SOC team to the championship before going on to college to play for Louisiana Tech University. She was a star there, leading her team with a total of 1,306 points and 1,200 rebounds to four Final Fours, two titles in 1981 and 82, and a 130-6 win-loss record. Kim, on the other hand, was a star at Stephen F. Austin. They may not have made the kind of name their brother made, but they obviously did well for themselves and are still in connection with their brother. In 2018, Dennis posted to his Facebook page a photo of himself, his sisters, and their mother Shirley after a dinner they had together, and he looked extremely happy with his first girls. Dennis also has other women in his life, and in fact, his history with women almost mirrors that of his father. From high-profile celebrities that ended up as flings to three failed marriages, here are all the women Rodman has dated. Annie Bakes was born in February of 1965 and became a model at just 16 years old. She started by appearing for print magazines before transitioning to adult modeling as she posed for lingerie and underwear brands. Then she took her beauty to nightclubs where she met, apparently, the love of her life, or so she thought. Rodman saw the same qualities that drove many modeling agencies to chase after her, and the two started dating in 1987. She moved in with the NBA star, and a year later, they had their first child, a girl named Alexis Caitlin, on September 28, 1988. But while this child was still in her womb, Bakes accused him of beating her after the Pistons lost to the Lakers. Notwithstanding, they were married in September 1992, but the marriage only lasted 82 days. Bakes said he forced her to do abortions multiple times, gave her STDs, and cheated on her. She couldn't take it anymore and soon filed for divorce in 1993. After the divorce, she tried to get her life back and was successful at epitomizing what it meant to have beauty with brains in 1997 when she authored a book called White Girls Don't Pounce. She later married a police officer, but Dennis had already moved on with another woman, popular music icon, Madonna. Madonna, of course, needs no introduction, but we bet you didn't know she had a brief relationship with The Worm in 1994. And by brief, we mean only a few months, but Rodman dedicated a whole chapter in his 1996 memoir to her. He titled the chapter, Madonna, An Old Fashioned Tale of Romance. And in it, he wrote, quote, We never had any problems. It was one of the easiest relationships I'd ever been in. And further said, Madonna talked all the time about having a baby. I think she wanted every bit of Dennis Rodman, marriage, kids, everything, end quote. After Madonna, Rodman dated Stacey Yarbrough in 1997. Also in the same year, he allegedly had a fling with the American actress Vivica Fox. It was rumored that Fox had offered Rodman $20 million to impregnate her, but she denied ever dating the Hall of Famer in the first place. Then he did the craziest thing. He married himself. In order to promote his memoir, Bad As I Wanna Be, he dressed in a wedding dress for his book tour, and hey, he looked rather pretty in the midst of women clad in black tuxedo. After this strange wedding with himself, he met Carmen Electra. Carmen Electra is, of course, a well-known actress, model, singer, and media personality. As a model, she appeared in Playboy magazine, and as a singer, her songs were produced by Prince himself. As an actress, she starred as the beautiful Lanny McKenzie in the series Baywatch and other movies. 
when she lost her mother and sister within a month in 1998 to brain cancer and a heart attack respectively, she was dating Dennis Rodman. It was during that year of these tragic events that she married the NBA legend in Las Vegas. But when it looked like Electra was going to put all the hurt behind her, she and Dennis agreed to an end of their marriage that was only 9 days old. They reconciled briefly, but called it quits for good in early 1999. She told reporters after their separation many years later, quote, I was just going through the motions. I was completely numb at the time. I was dating Dennis Rodman. He was such a fun person to be around, and we went out every night. I remember thinking, this is my out. I'm just going to have fun, and I'm not going to worry about anything. Right after my mom and sister died, I flew to Las Vegas, and Dennis and I got married. I guess I was trying to cling to whatever I had. I mean, I'd lost my mom and my sister. I didn't want to lose anyone else. End quote. As Elector tried to find true healing, Rodman married Michelle Moyer. Michelle Moyer first met Rodman at a bar in 1999. During this time, she was a divorcee with a daughter named Tiana Lima. Not a big deal marrying a mother, Rodman thought, and soon started a family with her. They kicked it off with Dennis DJ Rodman Jr. in 2001 before Trinity Rodman joined the picture in 2002. Seeing that two kids were enough to start a family, they finally tied the knot in 2003 on Rodman's 42nd birthday. But history was not done repeating itself with Rodman's love life as Moyer filed for divorce a year later in 2004. This must have been due to Rodman's infidelity because he had reportedly dated the American actress Jamise Hoft in 2002 and the British model Alicia Duval between 2003 and 2004. However, the couple tried to work things out for a very long time, but in 2012 they officially called it quits when Rodman was facing jail time for not paying $800,000 worth of child and spousal support. At least they still share the custody of DJ and Trinity, even though these kids were mostly raised by their mother. Born in Newport Beach, California, Dennis Thane Rodman, also known as DJ, played high school basketball for Corona Del Mar High School in Newport Beach and averaged 19.6 points per game, leading his team to a 22-8 record during his freshman year. As a junior, he played for San Juan Capistrano, California, and averaged 16.1 points per game before making a mind-blowing improvement to 24.2 points per game his senior year. He currently plays for the Washington State Cougars basketball team, but has not done well on the court due to his persistent injuries. His junior sister, however, is making headlines as a professional soccer player. Trinity Rodman is Dennis's second daughter from his third marriage. She started playing soccer at the age of four, and at 10 she played for the SoCal Blues and won four national championships with the team. She turned pro without any college experience to become the youngest player at 18 to sign into the National Women's Soccer League or NWSL. She was selected by the Washington Spirit as their first draft pick. She proved her worth in her debut game, scoring her first goal within 5 minutes of being introduced into the game. She ended the season on a high, she was the youngest player to have an assist in the playoffs, and she was named the NWSL Best 11 and won the 2021 NWSL Rookie of the Year award. She has also represented the US at the international level and has authored a children's book titled Wake Up and Kick It. Her stepsister, on the other hand, has a somewhat different story. Alexis Rodman is the first child and daughter of Dennis. She had a tough childhood, especially as she was bullied in school for her father's lifestyle and behavior. And on top of all of that, her father was hardly ever around to reassure her of his love, so she developed anger issues early. One time during basketball, she punched someone and her response to her misbehavior was a simple, well, daddy does it. She has avoided the spotlight as best she could, but not enough to hide her marriage to Robert Banfield, which has produced a kid named Vincent. In his retirement, Dennis Rodman has tried his best to reconcile with his children and can be seen sometimes hanging out with them during games. If you enjoyed this story about Dennis Rodman's family, check out this next shocking family story. And be sure to subscribe and like the video below.